So we are going to solve the equation 2 times the cube root of 2y minus 1 equals y cubed plus 1. And we're going to do it with the help of black pen, red pen. Now black pen, red pen is an awesome math YouTube channel who does a ton of problems like these. So if you enjoy this video, I've left a link to his channel in the description and you can check out more of his content. Hello, my name is Blackpen Redpen and I'm very happy to be on Mule Prime Math channel. Today, I have this equation for you guys. And this is actually from one of the Copen questions, which is very cool. And be sure you guys go read more about this if you are interested. Here we are going to solve for y, and here you see we have a cube root, but here we have y cube. Hmm, how can we approach this? Do we just have to raise both sides to the third power? I don't really want to do that, because the way we'll end up is like y to the ninth power, huh? So don't do that. But anyway, I'd like to ask you guys to just pause the video right now and think about this first and then continue watch the solution, right? And Pikachu is saying hi to you guys. Hello. All right, so now let's see how we can approach this. Hmm, if you really want to just isolate the Q root, maybe you want to divide the two on both sides, huh? So I will do that for you guys. Here we can look at this as the cube root of 2y minus 1 and this is equal to y to the third power plus 1 over 2. Great! But again, do we really want to raise both sides to the third power? I really hope that's not the case. Let's investigate this a little bit more. Let's identify what's going on on each side. On the left hand side, you see we have 2 times y and then minus 1, and then take the cube root. As opposed, on the right hand side, we have y cube, and then plus 1, and then divide it by 2. Does that sound similar? Or any kind of connection that we can make? Yes, we should, right? Because in fact, the procedure that's happening right here, it's exactly the opposite of the procedure right here. Namely, they are the inverse of each other. What do I mean? You see, here we multiply by 2 with the y first, and then we minus 1, and then we take the cube root. Here, we do the opposite of the cube root, namely, we do y to the third power first, and then we do the opposite of the minus 1, which is plus 1, and then we do the opposite of the multiplication by, by 2, which we divide it by 2. So this right here, if you notice that, in fact, we can reduce this tremendously. Have a look on the right hand side right here. Suppose we have a function, let me just call that to be f, right? So let's say I will give you a graph. Let's say this is how the graph looks like for f. I know this is just the classic exponential graph, but you know, I just want to make my point. Great. Yeah. Well, if we have the inverse, how does the inverse of this look like? All you have to do is just take this and flip about the line y is equal to x. So if you do that, you end up with something that looks like this, right? And you can see that. Of course, we have to make sure that the inverse does exist. And if it does, here is how the inverse will look like. And one more time, it's just a reflection about the line y is equal to x, which is very good you will see why. All right. Well, let's investigate this a little bit. y to the third power plus 1 over 2. This right here is always increasing. You can use the derivative for that. So that means this right here, you know, it has an inverse. The inverse is that. So here is the deal. If we have f, it's equal to f inverse, right? f of x. Let's say this is equal to its inverse. What this means is that we must have the solution happening at y is equal to x. Namely, x has to be equal to this right here. So in another word, we can either just solve this or solve this. We don't want to solve this. And that's exactly the situation that we have right now. Again, you can call this to be f right here. And you, yeah, let me just say this right here as f. And you can just say this right here is the f inverse, or the other way around, doesn't matter. Depends on which one that you define to be the original. But anyway, if they are equal, they must have the answer at f of x is equal to whatever the input is. 
I don't know why they like to use the Y for the input. So here we will use the Y for the input. Hopefully you guys don't mind. So this is of Y and of Y, just like that. And in fact, it seriously does not matter which one you pick. Let's just say we want to make this equal to that. So we just have to solve Y is equal to Y to the third power plus one over two, like that. And you see this right here reduced the question tremendously. Now we can solve this rather easily, well, to a certain degree, I'll say. Multiply two on both sides and bring that to the other side. So here we actually have y to the third power minus 2y and then plus 1. That's equal to 0. Yep. Well, how can we solve a cubic equation like this, though? We guess and check. Let's use 1 or negative 1. And we see that when y is equal to 1, 1 minus 2 plus 1, it does give you 0. So you can say y is equal to 1 is a solution. So that means we know this right here can be factored as y minus 1 times something else, and that's equal to 0 like this. What's that something else, though? Well, we can do the synthetic division to figure that out. So let's go ahead and do that right here. Write down the coefficients. We have 1, but we do not have y to the second power, so it becomes just 0, and then we have negative 2 and then 1. And here we have y minus 1, right? You put on a solution named the 1 right here. And you bring down this, which is 1. And then you do this times that. 1 times 1 is 1. You put it down right here. And you add 0, minus, 0 plus 1 is 1. And then you do the same thing. This times this is 1. Put it here. And then you combine this and that, which is negative 1. Lastly, this times this, which is negative 1. Combine, you get 0. And you will end up with 0 because we know this divides that. That means the remainder here, this is the remainder. There we go. Yeah. And how do we read the answer from here? Let me show you. Here we have y to the third power, right? So that means the degree goes down by 1 first. We have 1 y squared, and then minus, sorry, plus y, and then minus 1, like that. Great. So now we can say, over there, we just have to solve y minus 1 times y squared plus y minus 1 being equal to 0. Here we know y is equal to 1, and here we can just use the quadratic formula. Or if you would like, you could have used the cubic formula all the way in the beginning, but that's overkill. Anyway, use the quadratic formula right here. y is equal to negative 1, so we have this right here. And then plus or minus square root of 1 square minus this times that, which is just going to be 1 plus 4, which is 5. And yes, we somehow have the golden ratio, huh? But it's actually the negative golden ratio. Negative 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 and also the plus. So, yeah. But anyway, this right here is it. So let me just write down the answers for you guys. Answers. We have, let me just write down y is equal to 1 y is equal to negative 1 plus or minus square root of 5 all over 2, like this. Right? Very cool stuff, isn't it? All right, hopefully you guys all like this. And again, I'm very happy to be on Mu Prime Math channel. And don't forget to check out his video. I highly recommend you guys to subscribe to Mu Prime Math. And also, check out my channel. I have a lot more similar questions like this for you guys. And I hope to see you in my future videos. And as always, that's it. Bye!